glory. Hallelujah. We serve a great God. He's mighty. He's powerful. And he's a loving God. And he loves each and every one of you. Let us exalt his name together today. As we come into his house with the spirit of praise. As we come into his house to worship him on this great day. A day that we commemorate our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ being on the cross as our Redeemer being on the cross as the Lamb of God being on the cross as our Savior let us exalt him today as he has been hung stretched wide let us exalt him he's great and greatly to be praised so let us stand and worship him let us give him all that is due unto him oh give thanks unto the Lord for his mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the God of gods. For his mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks to our Lord. For his mercy endures forever. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, it's in the name of Jesus that we exalt you today, that we magnify your name today, for you are truly worthy to be praised. Father, we thank you for every person that has entered the doors today. Father, we thank you that your Holy Spirit will take full control of this service that he may minister to your people oh God that he may be the one that controls this service Lord God we come exalting you we come inviting in the Holy Spirit that he will set the atmosphere that will make preaching easy. That he will set the atmosphere. That the word may penetrate our hearts and minds. That he may set the atmosphere. That someone may come running today. As our Lord and Savior have been lifted up. Lifted up before the world. That we might be saved. Father, we thank you today. We pray right now, oh God, for each and every person that is viewing online, for each and every person that is here on campus. Father, we pray for each and every visitor that is in the house tonight. And Father, we pray for our pastor, Dr. Vickers, we pray for the man of God that will bring forth the word today. Father, we pray your strength in him as he stands before your people. That the word will do just what you said it will do. We thank you today. We thank you for the salvation. We thank you for all the deliverance. Father, we thank you that as your people stand today, oh God, that deliverance will take place. 
salvation will take place healing will take place because we realize by your stripes we are healed and Lord we thank you and we pray this prayer today a glorious day a magnificent day that the Savior has been risen and it's all in your son Jesus name that we pray this prayer amen amen and amen hallelujah give God some praise give him some praise
bless you, God. We honor you, God. Hey, we magnify you, God. We say thank you, God. We say thank you, God. We praise you, God. We praise you, God. We praise you. So we magnify him on tonight. We bless the name of God on tonight. We lift the name of God tonight. We love the God tonight. So one more time, let's say Jehovah, 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 we praise you. So we welcome you. We want you to know that you are welcome. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We are grateful tonight to be in the presence of the Lord, to be in the Son's house as we commemorate Good Friday, the day that the Passover lamb laid down his life for us. We come into this space grateful that we have a Savior who took our place. And it's mighty quiet in here. I wish I had some folks in here who were grateful to have a Lord and Savior who thought enough of you to drink from the cup and to still go to Calvary. I wish I had just about 10 or 12 folk who were not ashamed of Jesus Christ and all that he did for you. We've come tonight to worship him and to thank God for the gift of his son. We're grateful tonight because he who knew no sin became sin so that we might become the righteousness of God. We are grateful to God for the gift of his son and we are grateful for each and every one of you to our very special guest tonight, Pleasant Grove Baptist Church all the way from Marietta. We praise God for you. 
And we are so grateful to have initiated a fellowship of sister churches. You hosted us in such a wonderful way as we came and shared with you on Ash Wednesday. And it is our delight to host you tonight. And we're just looking forward to all that God is going to do in, with, and through you and your pastor, Dr. Sammy J. Dow. Amen. And we'll say more about him very shortly. Well, we are making our march toward Resurrection Sunday, and we are closing out the final days of the Lenten season. And Pleasant Grove, we know that you have been fasting and you have been, uh, been faithful in your 40-day devotional. And I shared with Dr. Dow that I think it would be good for us as sister churches to take that journey together next year as this is something we are looking to continue uh, for years to come. Amen. Amen. And so we salute you uh, for your faithfulness. I know some of you are licking your chops right now. Can't wait to drink the sodas and get the fried foods back in your diet. All the things you gave up. Amen. Amen. But we thank God for your presence tonight. Let me uh, just for a few moments pull pastoral privilege and just say thank you uh, to members of Fairfield Baptist Church who have journeyed uh, with me this week. I know that some of us are tired and decided to worship online. No judgment tonight. No judgment. Uh, but we've been traveling all week long. We went to West Hunter Street Baptist Church on Tuesday night and shared in their Lenten uh, series and their Holy Week revival. And then last night we traveled to Friendship Community Church in South Fulton with Dr. Torrin T. Daly and shared in the Monday Thursday worship experience. And then today, many of you may not know, but uh, we shared in the ordinance of baptism by way of surprise uh, at 10 a.m. this morning here on our campus. Uh, someone just yesterday uh, said, Pastor, uh, Fairfield is my home church. Uh, this is my church home, but I live out of state, and I'm headed back on Saturday, and I want to be baptized before I go back home. And is it possible to be baptized? And so uh, we made some phone calls and made it happen. And I just wonder, I can't stay here tonight but I want to start here. I wonder what would happen if Baptist churches had an expectation to baptize every time we came to church. I wonder how many more folks would be saved if we had that expectation. And so we celebrated the ordinance of baptism this morning. And then we celebrated seven last sayings from the cross in the C.L. Nall Chapel. Our associate ministers, uh, seven of our associate ministers uh, were just awesome today. They were awesome. And Reverend Joyce Smith led that effort. And then at 2 p.m., there was a remnant of us who traveled to Historic Friendship Baptist Church in Atlanta. I delivered the seventh word from the cross. And then we stopped and got some vittles and rushed on back here to celebrate with Pleasant Grove for Good Friday evening service. And so we've been rolling all week long, all day long, and God has given us strength for the journey. And uh, we're going to need some more strength. Tomorrow we'll come at 12 noon for our Easter egg hunt, a time of fun for the entire family. And then on Sunday morning, on Resurrection Sunday morning, we will convene at the C.L. Nall Chapel for sunrise service at 6 a.m. And our pastor emeritus, Dr. Michael Benton, will bring the morning message. Amen. We're looking forward to hearing from him. And then we will gather for breakfast. There will be no Sunday school. We will gather for breakfast immediately following sunrise service. And then we will conclude and climax with resurrection worship at 9.30 a.m. here in this place. I am looking forward to all that God is going to do in this place. And Pleasant Grove, we know that the presence of God is not restricted to Lithonia. 
We know that the presence of God is going to meet you and that Dr. Dow will deliver a powerful message from on high. And so we encourage you uh, to make the effort to be in the place where the name of God dwells. You know what? If, if Christians can't get excited about Easter, we ought to just close up shop. I mean that. I mean that. I've seen people on social media talking about it doesn't take all that. Well, when I think about all that it took for Jesus to hang there, when I think about all that it took for Joseph to beg of his body and lay him in a borrowed tomb, when I think about all that it took for God to turn back toward the ravaged body of his son and determine that death couldn't hold him and that the grave could, I'm sorry. It ought not be hard for us to come and give God thanks and praise. I shared this earlier, but I thought about what it took and what it cost. And one songwriter said, if riches could have paid the debt, then God would have sold all the walls of Jasper and the streets of purest gold. But he knew the cost of one lost soul was more than wealth could buy. So he took on the form of man and became the perfect sacrifice. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And that's good news for us tonight. In the name of the Lord be praised. I'm so excited again to see each and every one of you. And to those of you worshiping online, we thank God for your presence. We come into this space grateful for the supreme sacrifice of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, but it would be inappropriate of us to come into this place grateful for the sacrifice of our Lord and not come with the same spirit of sacrifice. It would be inappropriate for us to come into the presence of God knowing that God gave everything, he gave his all so that we could be redeemed and restored and it would just be wrong of us to come here and not give anything. And so here's what I'm asking. The deacons are coming. Ushers are preparing. Uh, I'm not going to cheapen this experience by putting a number on what I'm going to ask you to give tonight. God has been too good for me to limit you with what you should give. I don't know what Jesus dying on the cross means for you. I don't know what his poured out blood means for you. But I'm reminded of David's words. David says, I will not offer to God that which costs me nothing. And when I give to God, it's meaningful because God has given everything to me. Scripture puts it this way. He who spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he then not freely with him give us all things? If God wouldn't withhold his only begotten son from us, then there is no good thing that he will withhold from us. And so as we give tonight, we give with joy and we give with great expectation. And as we're preparing to give, I'm going to invite at this time uh, the music ministry of Pleasant Grove to begin to take the choir stand. Would you join me in thanking God for a Fairfield music ministry tonight? for blessing us. Thank you so much. And I know that God is getting ready to bless us through the music ministry of Pleasant Grove Baptist Church and certainly through the preaching ministry of Dr. Dow. And this is what we say at Fairfield when we give. We say this, I am a cheerful giver and a bountiful sower. I am committed to giving my time, talent, and tithe. I believe that God is the source behind every resource. I believe that God will supply all of my needs and make all grace abound toward me. We're believing by faith that as we give, it is already blessed and that God would bless us in our giving as he sustains us in our living. If you desire to give physically, you can do so. If you need an envelope, kindly raise your hand. Our ushers will be delighted to serve you. If you want to give electronically, 
you're able to do so those instructions are available on the screen whichever way you give it is blessed and God will use it for the upbuilding of his kingdom the relief of the poor and the spread of the gospel to all nations and ever for all you've done for me blessings and glory and honor they all belong to you thank you Jesus Can we make one big choir? And ever, and ever, for all you've done for me. Blessings and glory and honor, they all to you. Thank you, Jesus. So good to see our mothers tonight. God bless you. Fairfield Baptist Church welcomes Dr. Sammy J. Dapp. Yes, we do. Blessings and glory and honor. Come on, church. Blessings and glory. They all belong to you. Come on, you're going to get it in a minute. Blessings and glory. And honor. It almost feels like church. Blessings and glory. Come on, one more time. Blessings. Yes, sir. Thank you, Jesus. Can we sit right there? One last time. Just want to praise you. Forever. How long, church? How long? Bless your name. Thank you, Jesus. name of the Lord be praised. You may claim your seats in the presence of the Lord. So excited to welcome one of God's great voices of and for this generation. And so I invite you to direct your attention to the screen, after which we will hear from heaven by way of the music ministry of Pleasant Grove Baptist Church, and after which you will hear from the voice for the evening. I invite you at this time to turn your attention to the screen. Let the church say amen. amen. Fairfield Baptist Church welcomes Dr. Sammy J. Dow. Dr. Sammy J. Dow serves as the senior pastor of Pleasant Grove Baptist Church in Marietta, Georgia, affectionately known as The Grove. Leading a vibrant congregation of over 2,000 members, Dr. Dow's ministry focuses on empowering individuals to achieve their fullest potential in life, family, and work. A proud native of High Point, North Carolina, Dr. Dow earned a Bachelor of Science from North Carolina Agricultural and Technical State University, a Master of Social Work from the University of Pittsburgh, and an Executive Certificate from the Morehouse School of Medicine. 
He also holds a Master of Divinity from the Samuel Dewitt Proctor School of Theology at Virginia Union University and earned Doctor of Ministry from Payne Theological Seminary. With a background in gospel ministry, he was licensed and ordained at Mount Ararat Baptist Church in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and has served in various leadership roles at Morning Star Baptist Church in Baltimore, Maryland, and the Luke Church in Humble, Texas. Beyond his pastoral duties, Dr. Dow has made significant contributions to social and political advocacy. He served as the National Director of the NAACP's Youth and College Division, leading efforts to engage millions of young people on issues of social justice. Dr. Dow's commitment to community involvement extends to his roles in political campaigns, where he played as instrumental roles in voter mobilization efforts, particularly in Georgia's historic 2020 and 2021 elections. Dr. Dow is also a proud member of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. In addition to his pastoral and advocacy work, Dr. Dow is a respected educator, author, and consultant. His first book, Protect Your Peace, Tools for Managing Your Mind and Emotions, was released in November 2020. He serves as a professor of religious studies at Beulah Heights University and mentors doctoral students at Payne Theological Seminary. Dr. Dow is also the principal and CEO of the SJD Group a consulting firm specializing in small business and nonprofit capacity building. A proud husband and father, he resides in Marietta with his wife, Dr. Jacqueline Dow, and their son, Jackson Andrew Elijah. After Pleasant Grove has ministered in song, the next voice you will hear will be that of Dr. Sammy J. Dow.
Let us look to God in prayer. Father, we are indeed grateful for the beauty and blessings of this day. Father, we are grateful for another opportunity that we have to gather and worship. Grateful for this Friday that is good for us, but it was not so good for you. But thank you that you died anyway so that ultimately we might be reconciled to right relationship with God the Father. Lord, I ask that with precision of speech and clarity of thought that you would stand up strong in this place tonight. And Father, would you punish not your people because of the fatigue and frailty of the vessel, but it's your thing, God, and we ask that you do whatever you want to do. It's in the strong and powerful name of Jesus the Christ we do pray. And we all said together, amen. Well, this is indeed the day that the Lord has made. I'm going to try that one more time. This is indeed the day that the Lord has made. That's all right. This is indeed the day that the Lord has made. And we ought to rejoice and be glad in it. We are grateful. We are grateful for the opportunity to share tonight with Fairfield. It has been, uh, Dr. Vickers told you about the schedule Fairfield has been on this week. It's been an action-packed month at the Grove, and I, I, I am so looking forward to 11.59 p.m. on Sunday. Amen. So looking forward to it. I was up this morning, Dr. Vickers, at about 3.30 in the morning with only a slither of a voice, and so the Holy Spirit has been kind all day, but I would warn my preachers who are here tonight to make sure you have one of those just-in-case resurrection sermons ready. Amen. Uh, let me thank Dr. Vickers for this opportunity, this privilege for this fellowship that we have commenced this year. Pleasant Grove, Fairfield, will you help me thank God for Dr. Vickers? to our deacons, to our preachers, to our leaders, to our music ministry who have made the journey with me tonight. Thank you, thank you, thank you for giving of your time. Amen. Thank you for giving of your time after what has been a busy month. Well, it's not my intention to belabor the point. I want to read verses 17, 18, and 19 from Philemon. Verses 17, 18, and 19 from Philemon, New International Version of Scripture, for those who can, if you'll stand for the reading of God's Word. Philemon, verses 17 through 19, New International Version of Scripture records it as such. So if you consider me a partner, welcome him as you would welcome me. If he has done any if he has done you any wrong or owes you anything, charge it to me. I, Paul, am writing this with my own hand. For the time that is ours to share together tonight, I'd like to tag this message. It's already covered. It's already covered. You may be seated even in the presence of God. Paul's letter to Philemon is unique for several reasons. It is a private letter intended to address a very personal concern, and it's the only complete letter, private letter of Paul's that we have. A vivid witness of the providence of God, it would not be in our Bible today apart from some very surprising circumstances surrounding it. 
Its charm and beauty make it a notable piece of literature, and though it has nothing of the mark of Paul's doctrinal or theological system, we would be vastly poorer in our understanding of Paul's teaching without it. The occasion for the letter can be simply stated, Onesimus, a runaway slave, was converted through the influence of Paul and became a trusted, valuable friend and co-worker for the Apostle Paul during his imprisonment in Rome. Onesimus was a slave of Philemon who lived in Colossae. Philemon had become a Christian through Paul's influence and the church in Colossae met in his house. For a time, Paul was, was tempted to keep Onesimus for his own support, but the two of them finally agreed that Onesimus should return to his master, even though they knew masters could do what they wished with runaway slaves brought back to their charge, including having them put to death. However, based upon Paul now writing this personal letter to Philemon, there is no question that the new order that he proclaimed into which we enter through our new life in Christ lends no precedence to class and status. Paul is declaring in no uncertain terms that in the present experience of Christ's kingdom, there is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female, for you all are one in Christ Jesus. Many have often asked why this letter was even included in the collection of Paul's writings that made its way into the canon that we now know as the Holy Bible. Scholars have discovered that because of Paul's letter to Philemon and Philemon's subsequent graciousness towards Onesimus, Onesimus went on to become the bishop of the church in Ephesus. The power of one man's request coupled with the extension of another man's graciousness impacted the life of a former slave who went on to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with thousands of Ephesians. This may well have been the reason for the letter to Philemon having been included in the collection of Paul's writings. Uh, uh, but, but Dr. Vickers, as I was digesting this story, reflecting on resurrection and what it means to us, I was struck by verses 17 when it says, so if you consider me a partner, I want you to welcome O Onesimus as you would welcome me. This is Paul writing to Philemon, telling Philemon that if you consider me a friend, I want you to welcome back your former slave who has run away from your house. I don't want you to welcome him as your slave who is returning. I want you to welcome him in the same way you would welcome me as your friend. He says, and if he has done you any wrong and if he owes you anything don't make him responsible for the debt that he has accumulated I simply want you to put it on my tab here, Paul begins to build on his identity and involvement with Philemon and connects Philemon and Onesimus in his own life. He says, if you then count me as a friend, I want you to welcome Onesimus in the same manner that you would welcome me. Essentially, Paul was saying, if you are serious about the faith that you now claim to be in possession of, I want you to put your money where your mouth is to show how serious you are and how committed you are to the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul says, I know Onesimus owes you money. I know he stole something from you. I know he violated you, but I want you to welcome him back into your house in the same way you would welcome me. And I know why y'all sitting quiet on a good Friday in Fairfield because you're saying, Reverend, the fact of the matter is, if a, a if a joker messes around and steals something from me, 
if a joker messes around and owes me some money, you bet not even come near me until my money has been repaid. Don't you mess around and violate my home and then think you just going to walk back in my home. But so the fact of the matter is you can't hold that against somebody who owes you because we violate Jesus' house every time we show up in it. But he keeps letting us show up and he keeps giving us another opportunity to get it right. We owe him more than we'll ever be able to repay, but he keeps on welcoming us and calls us friends. To show how serious Paul is about seeing Onesimus restored, he offers to repay any money that Onesimus may have stolen from Philemon when he initially ran away. Wait a minute, Paul. You taking up for this brother who not only ran away, but he going to steal something out of my house on his way out the door? Hold up, wait a minute. Because if this was my address and he was trying to run away and take some of my stuff with him, he might make it down the steps. But I can't guarantee he making it out the front door. And if he does make it out the front door, he sure better not. Y'all excuse me. I, I, I'm talking to y'all like I'm in. If, if he makes it out the door, he most certainly bet not knock on my door again. But, 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 but Paul says, if he has wronged you, if he owes you anything, put it on my tab. The if indicates that Paul is covering the incidentals and the contingencies. You know, when you go to a hotel, you check in, they ask you for a card. They tell you how much the room rate is and the total for your stay. And then they add an additional hold onto your card above and beyond the cost of your stay to cover contingencies and what they call incidentals. So essentially when Paul is saying if he has wronged you or owes you anything, Paul knows good and well Onesimus owes uh, Philemon something. He knows well that he has wronged him. He says, but not only will I repay his debt, I'll take care of the incidentals. Uh, Paul didn't know what harm Onesimus running away may have caused Philemon or what expenses Philemon may have incurred trying to recover him, but it was Paul's desire that Philemon not hold Onesimus accountable for any of it. It does not matter that Philemon will without doubt refuse the offer. Paul is serious. He is willing to make restitution himself for his friend. But here's what struck me most about the letter and Paul's request and how it mirrors the entire purpose for Jesus being sent into the world in the first place. Let's rehearse the story again. Paul is asking Philemon to receive Onesimus back into his home even though Onesimus owes a debt that needs to be paid. Paul says, don't hold him accountable for what he owes that must be repaid. In fact, it will be repaid, but I'm going to cover the debt that he owes because he does not have the capacity to repay it. Philemon says, okay, Paul, if you're agreeing to cover his debt, I'll allow him back into my home because arrangements have now been made to ensure that his debt is satisfied. Y'all missed it. I'm a rehearse it one more time. Paul says, I need you, Philemon, to welcome Onesimus back into your house, even though he owes a debt that needs to be repaid and he does not have the capacity to repay it. He says, I'm going to repay the debt because he doesn't have two nickels to rub together to make a dime to repay it. He says, don't worry about it. I'll take care of it. In fact, you can put an extra hold on my card, not only to cover past debt, but if he creates any new debt when he gets back, I'll take care of that as well. Uh, Philemon says, all right, Paul, arrangements have been made to satisfy the debt that he owes that he cannot repay, so I'll let him back in the house. Y'all still ain't caught this thing. Let me try it, but I want to insert some different names. Jesus is asking God the Father 
to receive Sammy back into his house even though Sammy owes God a debt that needed to be paid. Jesus says don't hold Sammy accountable for what he owes because of his sin and his recklessness. Jesus says daddy I'm going to repay what he owes. I'm going to pay the debt of his sin because Sammy does not have the capacity to repay it and God says I'll let that joker back into the house because my son has made arrangements to cover his debt in full. Y'all help me even with a bad voice. I feel like preaching. Come here. I need you to put your name in there. Jesus is asking God the Father to receive you back into his home even though you owe God a debt that needs to be paid. Jesus says don't hold them accountable for what they owe because of their sin. Jesus says I will repay all of it. In fact Jesus says not only will I repay it I have already paid it. And I know, I know, I know why it's difficult for us to shout about that because some of us been in church so long that we don't remember some of our before Christ days and some of the stuff that God had to pay on our behalf. But I know you bougie and you in church on a Friday night now, but I need some folk who can have a flashback and say a couple years ago, if you were looking for me on a Friday night, the last place you'd find me is in the son's house, but I'm here because who? the sun sets free I'm well aware of those who take issue with Paul's actions here because it appears on the surface that he is returning a slave to his owner I understand the root of the sentiments all too well. However, that's not the core intention of what is at work in the letter to Philemon. Slavery, people of God, differs in this context from what we know as the American transatlantic slave trade. Even though, I might get in trouble here, even though there are those who have now confused patriotism with theology and belief. And we can now sell Bibles for $59.99 with the words, God bless America on the front. But I've come to declare like Dr. King, America is on its way to hell. For the way we perpetuate genocide in other countries and we call ourselves spreading democracy to other nations when the one we have here is jacked up. But, but let, me, let, me, let me get back to what I was saying. In fact, slavery in this particular context is most closely aligned with what we would know as indentured servanthood. It's where you worked to pay off a debt or for seven years, whichever occurred first. But that's not where I want to hang my sermonic hat tonight. Can I tell you the issue I have with our contemporary society? It's that they want us to believe that we have the capacity and the ability to do everything on our own and for ourselves. The challenge with believing that we have to do everything for ourselves is that it overlooks the fact that there are some things we just do not have the ability to accomplish on our own. That's what my issue is with this whole pull yourself up by your bootstraps mentality that has people driving themselves crazy trying to figure out everything on their own and to keep up with the Joneses. But if we are honest, there are times that we spend so much energy trying to put our lives together, trying to keep our lives together, trying to make ends meet, trying to check everything off the list. And we run ourselves ragged trying to juggle everything in life and make 
sense of everything in hopes that our human efforts will be enough to cover our debts and our obligations and our responsibilities. And all Jesus wants us to see is that even on a good Friday, there are some debts and some obligations and some responsibilities that we simply don't have the ability to cover for ourselves. And even from a cross, he declares it's already covered. There was, there was a gentleman by the name of James Harriet who tells of an unforgettable wedding anniversary that he and his wife celebrated early in their marriage. His boss had encouraged him to take his wife to a fancy restaurant, but Harriet balked at that idea. He was young in his career. He really couldn't afford it, but his boss kept saying, oh, take her out anyway. Uh, it's a special day. Uh, he finally reluctantly agrees and he surprises his wife with the news. And while en route to the restaurant, Harriet and his wife had to make a stop at the gas station. After having finished his business at the gas station, he returned to his car and drove to the restaurant, unaware that his credit card had fallen out of his wallet at the gas station. After a wonderful meal, he reaches for his credit card when the bill comes, only to discover that his card was gone. He was embarrassed. He was trying to figure out a way where he could satisfy the debt that they had eaten up. The waiter looks at him and says, sir, I'm not certain why you're so concerned. Because your dinner is already covered. James Harriet looks confused he, he asks the waiter, he says, what do you mean my dinner is already covered? The waiter exclaims, I received instruction that we were not to accept a card from you because uh, there's a gentleman from your place of employment who called and put his card on file for whatever debt you incurred tonight. His boss had called ahead of him to ensure that whatever bill was created, there was already resource and provision to take care of it. And sometimes God has to allow our card to fall out of our wallet at the gas station so that we can walk fully into the blessing and the provision that he's going to make available to us at the restaurant. Because some of us will have been at the restaurant arguing with the waiter about how they needed to take our cards. No, I need you to slap five with somebody and declare if Jesus can pay it, if Jesus wants to pay it, I'm going to let Jesus handle it because I know my card isn't strong enough to do it for myself. Uh, uh, uh. But can I tell you, on a good Friday, God has done the same thing for each one of us. He sent Jesus specifically to die on a cross to cover the debt of our sin. And because we Baptists and we've been in seven last word services all week, we know that while Jesus is hanging on the cross, he declares it is finished. But Dr. Vickers, I was intrigued by it is finished. When you look at it in the original language, he's really saying it is finished and will continue to be finished. Which says he didn't just cover the stuff that had already happened. He covers the stuff that he knows is still going to happen. See, he doesn't just forgive me and cover the debt of the stuff I did before I got saved. He covers the stuff he knows I'm still going to do even after I get saved. 
It's because of Jesus' shed blood that my debt has been paid in full. And because his blood never loses its power, I don't ever have to be held hostage by the shackles of sin, guilt, and shame. Because I can look sin, guilt, and shame in the face and declare, you ain't got no power over me. It's already covered. Here's what I want you to understand. In spite of our debt, in spite of our obligations because of our sin, in spite of our flaws, in spite of our faults, Jesus' death, burial, resurrection was a demonstration of God's willingness and ability to cover the debt we were unable to satisfy. Uh, uh, um, I, I, I was at the St. John Baptist Church in Gainesville, Georgia, earlier today, and one of the uh, preachers, she declared as the title of her sermon, he came and got me out of layaway. Now listen, listen, I know we down here in Lithonia, y'all are real bougie down here, you know, y'all y'all have middle class jobs, y'all drive foreign cars, y'all are in here tonight with your Gucci and your Louis and your Prada, y'all look good tonight, but can I get some saints who know about a layaway? Yeah. See... See, I ain't shame of where I come from. My mama would go down to Roses, and she put that 10% down, and then you know you had to go in every week when you got paid and put a little something else on it. And if you messed around and missed your payments, they'd put your stuff back. Y'all know what I'm talking and, and then after you got done paying on your stuff, you know, there would be a line and everybody would be in there trying to act proper after they had gotten done paying for their stuff. Because, see, once it was paid off, you couldn't tell us nothing. All right, I done went down to Roses and got me some stuff. And everybody else trying to go broke paying for it all at one time. But I'm one of them layaway saints. But here's what I shout about. I shout about the fact that even when I missed a payment, God wouldn't let them put me back on the shelf. He told Jesus, go on down there to the store and make sure you put your card down. And you might ask me, what's the card that he put down? I believe they told me that when they pierced him in his side, out came blood and water. And I need you to understand that when they pierced him in his side and the blood came streaming down, the reason he was able to satisfy the debt is because the blood wiped everything that was on your receipt off. And so when they went to attempt to charge you, they didn't even know what to charge you because it had been washed by the blood of the lamb. Uh, 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 I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. Here's what I want you, first thing I want you to know is it's already covered because Jesus vouches for us. I gotta move, Jesus vouches for us. Look at verse 17, it says, so if you consider me a partner, I want you to welcome him as you would welcome me. Paul is essentially putting his name on Onesimus. So even if you don't think much of Onesimus, I want you to apply whatever standing you think of me to him and treat him with my standing. Uh, I'm a proud member of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. It is literally Jesus' fraternity. That's why I had to wear this black and gold for you all tonight to let my frat brother, brother pastor, know that we got this thing covered. But uh, in order to join the fraternity, you need someone in the chapter who's willing to put their name on you, which means that when your name comes up for consideration, that person has to stand and defend you and address your character and say to the brotherhood, I'll be responsible for making sure they are the type of fraternity brother we want in the house. That's what Paul does here. Paul says, you may not think much of him. 
But if you think something of me, I want you to treat him the way you would treat me because I'm willing to put my name on him. Can I tell you, that's why all of us can shout about the fact that we're called a child of God, which means it doesn't matter what you think when you hear my name, but when you hear that I'm a son of God, when you hear that I'm a daughter of God, when you hear I've been redeemed and saved by the king, it doesn't matter what you think of me personally, there's just a certain way you can't treat me because I belong to the king of kings and the lord of lords. I dare somebody to stick their chest out tonight and declare I'm a child of God. God. It doesn't matter what comes up against me. It doesn't matter what comes my way. My bill is covered because my daddy has made arrangements. Hold on. Wait a minute. It's covered because there is an accurate account of the charges. Uh, uh, he says, he says, and if he has done you any wrong or owes you anything, I want you to charge it to me. One of the most sobering moments each month in my household is when the credit card bill comes. And, 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 and I got to sit with my wife at the table and start explaining all of these sneaker purchases that are on the card and and you know sometimes I'm tempted to try and say it's not my charge <laughs> well babe hold on wait that one's not mine so one day I hit her with that and I thought okay she, you know I'm good I'm in the clear she comes back to me the next day and she says uh, I called the credit card company and they say there's no evidence of fraud on the account. I said, what you say? <laughs> she said, so that means all of the charges on the bill belong to you. <laughs> and, and I got scared, but she said, hold on, wait, I've already paid my portion. Here's what you have left. And when I saw what I had left to pay, and then I went and looked at my checking and my savings, I was able to move a little something from over there to right here. And then I moved a little something over there and said, hold on, wait, don't y'all pull that out to Friday so that I could take care of what I had left, even when I tried to deny the charges that I created, the report was still right. Some of us are trying to negotiate with God because we want to tell God some of the things that are on this month's statement are not ours. Yes, they are. That's why when we pray, we have to pray that God forgive us of our sins of omission and commission, which means I need him to forgive me of the stuff that I know I did, but I also need him to forgive me of the stuff that I don't even know was a sin. I need him not just to forgive me of my sin in deed, but I also need him to forgive me of my sin in word and in thought. Lastly, lastly, and I'm done, may the Lord God bless you real good. I need you to understand it's already covered because Jesus' signature carries power. Look, 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 look at verse, verse 19 makes me shout because Paul says, I, Paul, am writing this with my own hand. What Paul was attempting to say is, I didn't have one of my ministry associates write this letter to you on my behalf. Paul says, I took time out of my schedule to write this letter to you for myself. I sat down with my own hand, my own pen and ink, my own stationary paper and began to write this letter for you. And I can almost imagine Dr. Vickers that as Paul is finishing this letter, I can see him putting a greeting on the end of it. Best regards, Paul. 
And when Philemon gets the letter with Paul's signature, he takes it seriously because Paul has instructed him, I have written this and signed this myself. I started shouting because I too have a letter that's been written on my behalf. And Jesus didn't send a proxy to Calvary. Jesus climbed up that hill called Calvary himself. And as he was finishing the letter to cover my sins, he signed it, it is finished. And Father, into your hands, I commend my spirit signed sincerely Jesus your son and I'm excited about that thing because he didn't sign it with a fountain pen and he didn't sign it with gel ink and, and he didn't sign it with a ballpoint pen but can anybody give God praise while I'm on my way to my seat that Jesus grabbed a piece of a cross that was sticking him in his back and he took the piece of the cross that was sticking him in his back and he held it out to his side as the blood was streaming down and when he got a little blood on the piece of the cross he began to sign his name in blood and that's why we sing Jesus paid it all and it is all to him that we owe sin had left a crimson stain but can somebody shout he washed it white as snow I believe that's why the hymn writer says the blood that Jesus shed way back from Calvary it's the blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will never, it'll never lose its power because it soothes my doubts and it calms my fears and it dries all of my tears. Oh, it's the blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will never lose, it'll never lose its power for it reaches to the high highest mountain but that's not where his blood found me I'm glad that it reaches to the highest mountain but I'm also glad that it found me in the lowest valley it is the blood that gives me strength from day to day can somebody help me shout it'll never lose it'll never lose its power I'm in my seat but can I get an old saint to help me help me declared that there is a fountain uh, filled with blood uh, drawn from uh, Emmanuel's vein uh, and sinners plunge uh, beneath that flood uh, lose all uh, their guilty stains uh, I'm so glad uh, that Jesus covered my faults uh, and I'm so glad uh, that he covered my sins uh, and I'm so glad uh, that he covered my debt uh, and if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side I would have been killed by the weight of my sin would have been crushed by the pressure of addiction would have been crushed trying to cross my T's and dot my I's but Jesus went to Calvary to save a wretch like you and me can you give him praise y'all know I'm a Baptist preacher but it's good Friday so I gotta leave him in the grave but can somebody shout he might be in the grave but it's a borrowed tomb and all I gotta do is wait and hold on a little while longer because even in the grave he's turning some things around and he's working on my behalf shout yes shout yes Shout yes. If he's paid it, shout yes. If he's made a way, shout yes. If he's opened a door, shout yes. If he's been good to you, shout yes. If he's made ways out of no way, shout yes. Ain't the Lord all right? Then you ought to be able to open up your mouth and give God praise. 
I know he's in the grave, but can you open up your mouth and bless his name? I know he's in the grave, but can you give him glory for what you believe is on the way? Shout yes. Look at somebody and tell them it's covered, it's covered, it's covered, it's covered, it's covered. You may be here tonight after hearing the truth of the gospel declared. Perhaps you're here and you're walking around uncovered. You're walking around with an outstanding bill. We don't want to take for granted that you may be here and your name and your life has not been covered by the bloodied signature of our Savior. We extend this invitation to you. Our deacons are coming, deacons from Pleasant Grove, we invite you to come as we rise, as we are able in mind and in body. We offer Christ to you, oh my brother, we offer Christ to you, oh my sister, he will give you brand new life abundantly. You ought to come tonight. Perhaps you're here tonight and you're saying within yourself, I'm covered. My name, my life is covered. But maybe you're here tonight. You don't have a church home. You don't have a place to connect, a place to grow in grace. And in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we'll be happy to receive you at Fairfield. We'll be happy to receive you at Pleasant Grove if you're here tonight. Just come on, meet us at this altar. So come, if you're here tonight, come on. If you are weary and heavy laden, you ought to come. You may be seated. Can we praise God for a saved house tonight? Would you join me in praising God for the life, the ministry, the witness, the preaching of Dr. Sammy J. Dow? Come on. Can we praise God? Amen. We thank God for the reminder that it's been covered. It has been covered and will continue to be covered. You can live your life with joy and in freedom when you know you can't max out that car. To the utmost, Jesus saves. We thank God for such a timely, relevant, 
doctrinal reminder of the hope that we have because of the finished work of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We're making ready to leave tonight. And I said this earlier, and for those of you who traveled with us as we shared earlier this afternoon, we were encouraged not to rush to Sunday morning. There are some things that life will teach you that you just have to sit with. Some things you just can't shout through. There's some realities you have to sit with. There's some traumas that demand that we sit with. There's some losses that we have to sit with. There's some brokenheartedness that we just have to sit with. That's the bad news. For all of us that are sitting in some facsimile of brokenness, the bad news is we have to sit with it. But here's the good news. Dr. William Augustus Jones Jr. would say it this way, that for every Friday question, there's a Sunday morning answer. But for now, we have to sit believing that somehow God will bring ultimate victory out of obvious failure. I don't want it lost upon us that the cross was failure. It was failure. And yet God is such a God. that God can take our failure and bring success out of it. I thank God for the preaching ministry of Dr. Dow. To all of the reverend clergy, all of the deacons and church officers from both congregations, thank God for our ushers tonight. They have served so well, so faithfully. And our media team, all of those who worshiped online, I hope that you were blessed. I know you were blessed. If you are leaving this worship experience and you weren't blessed, it's your fault. I blame you. The Spirit of the Lord met us tonight. As we rest upon our feet, we're making our stride towards Sunday morning. And I just feel that we ought to leave with a parting blessing. I like that, Derek. Let's leave Fairfield style. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. All blessing. Praise him. Here below. Praise him above. Ye heavenly hosts, praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And God said unto Moses, tell Aaron and his priestly sons, that when they bless the people of God to give them this blessing, the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. 
The Lord lift the light of his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. May the Lord God Almighty bless you in your downsetting and your uprising as you come and as you go in the city and in the field, in your joy and in your sorrow, in your labor and in your leisure. Be blessed, my brother. Be blessed, my sister. Until we meet at the feet of Jesus where there's neither sunrise nor sunset. To him be glory in the church now and forever. And all of God's people said, Amen, Amen, Amen. Sunday morning. Hug somebody, tell them you love them, and there's nothing they can do about it. God bless you. Be safe.